Bonjour les amis, comment ça va? La grègue est chaude? You remember that word from last time, la grègue, the word for a coffee pot? La grègue is a Louisiana French word, you don't find it pretty much anywhere else in uh, the French speaking world, but la grègue est chaude, j'ai mon café. Et je suis paré pour continuer notre discussion sur le français louisiané. Yes, I'm ready to continue our discussion of Louisiana French. Uh, again, we've been using in the last couple of lessons, we've been rather than using documents, we've been using the LSU Cajun French website. So you can follow along with that, make yourself copies. We're actually going through just the glossary, discussing certain terms that are in the glossary that are unique to Louisiana French or have a unique usage in Louisiana French in their pronunciation. Um, and um, we're just going down the glossary. We're going we're gonna to start with the letter H today. Um, and so we'll start with the letter H. Uh, just to let you know, in when in Louisiana French, uh, sometimes uh, there are many uh, Louisiana French speakers who might not, if they've never been educated in French, they might not know the correct name of the letter in um, in French, or perhaps they have adopted that English pronunciation. And it's because for many years, when French was, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, punished for being spoken in school and it was and it was oppressed, um, French speakers um, learned the alphabet in school in English. So you'll hear, you, in the old days, you would have some folks who were monolingual Louisiana French speakers who spoke little or no English, uh, but to say their letters, they would say their letters in, in English, you know. Uh, but, well, however you want to say it, but la lettre H, <laughs> letter H, we're going to start with today. We're going to start with the word, um, uh, to start with the word habillement, or the word habit. Habillement or habit. Habillement or habit is one of the words we use for clothes. The other is lange, uh, but we use habillement. It could be an outfit, it could be a costume. An abi could be your just some clothing that you might wear, an abi. Habitant. Habitant is the word we use for a former. It doesn't mean an inhabitant in Louisiana French, it means a former. And petit habitant was a former who who basically, you know, you know, that was what he did uh, to provide all his means. It wasn't to provide, uh, he wasn't, he didn't sell a lot of crops to other folks. Uh, the, what he grew was to survive on his, uh, for himself or herself. An uh, ab petit habitant. Habitation would be a farmstead, you know, a farm where the habitant would live. Okay. Talk about this word, hayer, the pronunciation hayer, which is different from international French, hayer, and it's the word we use to hate. We typically don't use the word detester uh, to mean to hate. We use the word hayer. And from hayer, you get the verb, uh, the adjective, haïsable, or pronounced aïsable. Some, some folks pronounce the H, some folks don't. Again, I might have mentioned that in an earlier lesson, but that uh, pronunciation of that H sound is not found at all in international French, but it is found in Old Acadian French, it is found in Louisiana French, and it is found in some older varieties of French back in France, uh, especially around the region where the Acadians came from. This pronunciation, this heart, the H sound that we hear in English, okay? And it's pronounced with some words and not with others. And this one, hayer, um, pretty much you hear is, is pronounced, but with aïsab or haïsab, you hear both of Louisiana French. And what does it mean, of course? Haïsab or haïsab mean hateful. Yes, hateful. Uh, is that when you were a kid, if you probably did something mean to your brother or sisters, uh, pretty sure someone, some adult would say, oh, haïsab, you know, haïsab, they would have called you that, you know. Uh, hale, we talked about before. Hale is a nautical term meaning um, uh, to haul, to tug, but we use it to mean to pull in any sense, not just, uh, you know, in a maritime sense on a boat, you know. Um, let's go to uh, another uh, word uh, later on there. We're going to see the word haunt. Haunt. Haunt is a word we use to mean shame or embarrassment. And we do pronounce the H pretty much, you know, everywhere. Um, now, a little interesting thing about that in any variety of French, when you say haunt, um, in English you would say, I am ashamed, I am embarrassed. In French you typically say, I have shame, I have embarrassed. So you would say, ta haunt, uh, j'ai haunt, okay? And then you have, from that, you have the adjective honteux which would mean a shameful, you know, just a totally embarrassing, you know, this is scandalous, you know. Um, another word, a conjunction here, we call it ormique. Try that, ormique. Ormique means unless. We don't pronounce the H in that one, ormique. Let's go down to um, um, the letter I. And the letter I, we're going to start with the word ici and isit. Ici and isit are the same meaning. They do mean here. Isit is, again, an old pronunciation, an old, uh, we found in, in France, in old, in um uh, in uh, old French in parts of France, we find that in old Acadian French, it's pronounced isit. Hear that. Um, let's talk about uh, this word itu. Itu, another one, along with that same idea of the old French and old Acadian French, itu. Not found universally in Louisiana French, but found in, in certain regions. Itu is the word for aussi, which is also, you know, tu, T O O, as well. So, uh, moitu. 
you know, uh, me too, you know. All right, letter J, let's go to letter J. Let's talk about, um, uh, we're gonna talk about the word uh, Jeanne, right, Jeanne. We don't typically say Jeanne, we more often say Jeanne, that pronunciation of for young, Jeanne. Um, let's talk about the word uh, joliment, try that, joliment. Joliment means pretty much, very or very, you know, it means, uh, it's kind of like, a, it's, it's the adjective form, uh, adverb form of joli, and you know joli meaning pretty. Um, joliment, when you say joliment, you know, ça va joliment bien aujourd'hui, you know, it's going pretty well today. Usually when we say in English sometimes it's pretty good or pretty well, it can mean a positive thing, but it can mean you know, not so positive thing. Um, in, in French when we say joliment, it is a positive thing, you know, joliment, pretty well, you know, joliment bien. Uh, jongler, we may have mentioned that word before, jongler, internationally meaning to juggle. In Louisiana French, jongler meaning to, to, to reflect upon, to think, um, to ruminate, you know, to, I guess to juggle your thoughts, if you would like, uh, as we used to jongler. And so from that, you also have the word jonglement, which refer to certain wandering thoughts, uh, reveries, you know, daydreams perhaps, but just our thoughts in general, the jonglement. Um, all right, let's go down to the letter. We don't have very many K words in any variety of French. That's not a typical letter we found to begin words. Usually if you have a word that begins with a K in French, it comes from another language. Let's go down to the letter L. Um, I like to think this word, La Fourche. La Fourche is someone from uh, Lafourche Parish, La Fourche. Uh, um, there's a, there was a little festival in uh, Matthews, Louisiana called La Vie La Fourchez, which would mean the life of La Fourche. What was that? Yeah. Uh, lanyap. Lanyap is the word, I mentioned that before, I have a, a playlist on my, uh, on my uh, YouTube channel and a chapter in my last book, Cherche la Chasse-Femme, right there, Cherche la Chasse-Femme, called Lanyap. And Lanyap means a little something extra given at no cost. It comes from the Spanish word meaning a little something extra. All right, let's go to the next word uh, I want to talk about today. Let's talk about uh, Largue ou Largue. Largue ou Largue are a couple of varieties of, to say tired. In tired Louisiana French, you could say fatigué with the K sound rather than the fatigué. You might hear that as well, the fatigué with the K or a G. You might also hear terms like largué or larg to mean tired. You might also hear the word las as well to mean to tired. Those are all terms you might hear for the word tired as well. Um, and lavette, and lavette is a little washcloth. Laver is the word to wash. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. We pronounce the word to lick as liche, liche, rather than leche you might hear internationally. Liche, you hear more often. Uh, and it's pronounced in uh, uh, tu lich, tu lich would be you lick. Okay, mon chien lich, tout, tout à fait. You know, my dog licks everything. You know, so. Again, lange, I mentioned that before. Lange are the word we use for clothing. Internationally, you might find it used for, for often for laundry, but in other varieties of French, uh, up in Canada, in some varieties of French Canada, lange is used for clothing as well. Um, we we'll talk about the word leave or live. It's pronounced both ways, leave or live, uh, depending on the regions of, of Louisiana you're in from. Uh, now, leave or live is a book as a masculine term, le live, okay? But if it's a feminine term, la live, it means a pound, you know, like, uh, tu peux acheter ça à saint piastres la live. You can buy that $5 a pound, la live. Okay. Uh, let's go down to a good word here. We're going to go down to the letter M. We'll talk about the word macaque. Macaque is the word we use for a monkey. Uh, and again, it's a species of monkey in international French, but we don't typically use the term singe. We use the term macaque to describe all apes and monkeys, macaque. As a result, you have words like macaquerie, and macaquerie would be like uh, foolishness, you know, monkey shines, things like that, you know. Machin azab. Machin azab is a term used in the southeastern parts of the state. It means, um, uh, it means to, um, it means a lawnmower, machin azab. Arbe is the word for lawnmower, okay? All right, uh, Meg, you had the word Meg. Meg means skinny or thin. Um, and um, another word, uh, there are two words you can use meaning to fast. One is jeûner, jeûner, uh, which where you get the word déjeuner, meaning to stop fasting. And the other one is to um, faire Meg, uh, to be thin. Um, uh, and jour Meg is like a day of fasting, jour Meg. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Mayi. Mayi is the word. Mayi is spelled almost the same thing as me, like but, me, but it's got that two little dots on the I, and that means you pronounce it in Mayi. We don't pronounce the S, but Mayi is the word we use for corn. We pronounce it more like they would have in, like in, in Haitian Creole, it's pronounced Mayi as well. 
All right, uh, and maîtresse, and maîtresse d'école, or maîtresse, and maîtresse is the word for a school teacher. All right, maîtresse, the word for a school teacher. Um, in some of the old songs, you hear it used as the mistress of the house, which is the origin of the term. Maîtresse d'école and maître d'école were the words you mean school mistress and school master were the words we used for school teacher. And in some regions, they don't, uh, some regions you'll hear maîtresse and maîtresse d'école and maître d'école, you hear both of them. In other regions, they'll only use maîtresse because in the majority of the time, the, the, the teachers were women. In fact, the region where I'm originally from, even though I'm a man and a teacher, I would be considered a maîtresse. Uh, so it would be in a, so you can call me maître d'école, maîtresse, whatever you want. That's fine. I'm good with that. Um, okay, let's go to um, let's go to this word manger. Manger is the verb to eat, but manger is also the noun. Le manger is the word we use for food. Uh, we typically don't uh, use the word la nourriture very often in Louisiana French that you might hear international French. You might hear la manger as a term as well. You know, like that. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the word moyar or maillard or moyar or maniar, different pronunciations, moyar or moyar. Uh, it is the term meaning a way, and we use it in all kinds of senses. I say pas la moyar de faire ça. You know, that's not the way to do that. Moi je fais ça, c'est moyar. You know, I do this, at, at this in this way. Uh, but moyar also can mean kind of or sort of. For example, um, il est moyar malade. He's sort of sick. He's not feeling too well, you know. If you say il est tout moyar malade, he's all, that means he's all the way sick. So you have the different ways, you know. Moke. Let's talk about moke. Moke meaning to miss. Internationally, when you use moke, it's kind of like the opposite of the way you do it in English. You would say, um, for example, you would say things like, um, si je dis, si je dis tu me manques, which literally would sound like you miss me. But you're actually saying I miss you in, Louis in uh, international French. However, interna in Louisiana French, we don't. We pretty much say it in the same fashion as you would. So if I said tu me manques, uh, that means you miss me. If I say je te manque, that means I miss you. Um, most of the time. All right. Uh, let's go down a little bit. Uh, maraguin. Maraguin. Um, maraguin or maringuin um, is the term. Is one of the terms we have for a mosquito. We also have the international term. Uh, Moustique as well, maraguin moustique. Maraguin is a term you find in, in uh, Canadian French as well. I believe it comes from a Native American term. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go down to the word um, massacre. Okay. Massacre means it, to massacre, but we often use it. I remember um, when somebody got beat up or like a sports team lost, we'd say les dogs. Uh, they were massacre in English, we'd say they. <laughs> massacre. Um, and matou, and matou is the word for a tomcat, a matou. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go. Uh, oh, a melon, a melon or a melon. Uh, melon is the word for a melon. A melon d'eau is a watermelon. We don't use the the international firm term uh, pastèque. And a cantaloupe, we call it a melon français. Melon français, French melon. Uh, all right. Uh, we mentioned before the word monterie. We use for lie, not particularly the word mensonge, monterie. Okay. Mépriser. Mépriser, ça veut mean to show disdain for, to, to, to critic, uh, to critique in some sense for mépriser. Uh, let's go down to this word here. Let's talk about um, mirliton. Mirliton. Mirliton is what in English is known as, um, I think it's called either called a vegetable pear or maybe called, is that the one? I think it's called chiori squash or something like that. But we, in English, we probably call it mirliton in, in Louisiana French. Mirliton. It's good, man. You smother that with like some shrimp, des chevrettes, or ça c'est bon. All right. Uh, misère. Misère is a word for misery. Misère can also just be like some, some teasing, some troubles. You know, tu, you know, tu me fais la misère. You know, you're giving me some misery, causing me some trouble. You know, so. um, in some regions, a moiselle is the word they use uh, for a firefly or a uh, dragonfly, a moiselle. You might hear that used for the different regions for that. Uh, moitié is the way we pronounce moitié, which is one of the words for half. It's the noun form of half, la moitié. Okay. Monde. Uh, monde is the word we use for the world, but monde is also the word we use for people. Uh, you have du monde là-bas. You know, had some people there. Tout le monde. That means everyone. Okay. Um, and sometimes you can even use it in a singular sense. You have un monde. Un monde peut faire ça, meaning un personne. Un monde, un personne. A world or a person. <laughs> that means that it means a person, you know, for, for people there. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Something we could talk about. Um, mouche à feu is another word for a firefly. Mouche à feu. Mouche à miel is the word for a honeybee. Uh, bourdon is the word for like a bumblebee. Okay. Mouillé, we talked about before. Mouillé is the word meaning to rain, not uh, not the rain. La rain is the rain is la pluie, but to rain mouillé. You know, if I did if I said samoui or imoui, that would mean it's raining. All right. 
Uh, let's go down um, to here. Uh, we'll go down to the letter N. Uh, for letter N, we're going to talk about um, we'll talk about uh, a nick. A nick is a nest. The way we pronounce it with a k at the end sound. Nick. Sound nick. Nonk, we talked about before, the word for uncle. Rather than onk, we pronounce it nonk more often than not. More often than not. Um, nuzot. Uh, nuzot is the word for uh, nuzot is the word for us. You know, us. Now you might often hear it at the beginning of a sentence, uh, but it's because that uh, that tendency we have, as I mentioned before, to put object pronouns and in front of uh, subject pronouns to move them around. So nuzot on am farsa. You know, you know us. We like to do that. We like to put those <laughs> move those uh, object pronouns around. Okay. Um, let's try this one here. Um, obstiné. Try that. Obstiné. Yeah. yeah. Obstiné is to argue or to haggle with somebody. Obstiné. An F. An F is the word for an egg. Now, in the plural form internationally, you would say des oeufs. And you may hear that, that in Louisiana French, but you also might just hear des oeufs aussi as well in the plural form. Okay. Oppression, or with, uh, with, with the, 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 verb, the, the article the in front of it, it becomes l'oppression. Oppression, l'oppression is the word for asthma. Okay, it looks like the word oppression. Well, an asthma can be can be quite you know, oppressive. Uh, l'oppression is a word we use for asthma. Okay. Um, all right. An orte is a toe, like a, your big toe and gros orte. It's a, it's still the official kind of international French word, but more nowadays and they um, they uh, in international French I've heard like in France they always say they um, um, they droit de pied, which would be like. Um, uh, foot digits or foot fingers, and we don't say that. We would barely say orte for toes and les doigts for fingers. Okay, ote, ote is one of the words you would use to mean to remove or to take off. Ote, you'll hear that very popular in the south central southeastern part of the state. In the south, um, I'm sorry, south central southwestern part of the state. In the southeastern part of the state, we typically use more of the term urtire, urtire, urtire to mean to take off or to remove. Uh, in Louisiana Creole, it's pronounced wete. Wete, you would hear those terms, uh, but we don't um, uh, we don't really use the term enlevé all that much in international term meaning to take off or to remove. Uh, I've heard it used like mean to have something taken away, you know, like you know you had a, like they repossessed your car. Hein? T'as eu ton char, de, on, uh, ton char était enlevé, hein? t'as en fait enlevé ton char, something like that. You know, uh, wawaron, wawaron is the word for bullfrog. Of course, it's a good onomatopoeia that you hear that wawaron. I mentioned before that. Um, uh, oublier is uh, as pronounced is the word we, we may pronounce more often oublier to forget oublier like oragon rather than ouragan we hear that a lot more um, and then ouvrage ouvrage is the word we use more often to for the noun of work you know je travaille I work mais mon ouvrage is my work rather than mon travail we would say mon ouvrage in that sense as well okay all right so um, we're gonna stop there for today. Next time we're gonna go on to la lettre P, to letter P next time to, to do that for um, continuing with this little um, discussion of words. Again, uh, please feel free to um, um, to make comments or ask questions on the on the YouTube channel. Um, you can make a comment. I will um, I, I I read the comments and, and then if it's, uh, you know I, if it's a uh, just to check where the comments are, and then I'll post, post them on there Might, if I think it's helpful to other folks to see the comments as well. You can also contact me uh, through uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, and you can join that uh, chat group, or you can, better yet, join our uh, Facebook um, our Facebook group, Louisiana French Lessons, where I will uh, update that with uh, more information as we go along. Okay. Uh, so hopefully uh, you're everybody staying safe and taking care of one another. It's, I think it's very important this time that you know one of the reasons I love to teach about our Louisiana French is to celebrate the differences we have in life that are important in life and to show respect as we were so show respect for each variety of a language. When I'm doing these lessons, we are called to show respect, I believe, um, to show respect for every human being. And so let's continue to uh, to live that way and to respect each other and to stay safe uh, during this time period. And encore, je vous dis que la force soit avec vous. May the force be with you. <laughs> and uh, I like Star Wars a little bit. And Star Trek. And I will tell you also, soignez vous autres and soignez les autres. You know, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Jusqu'à la prochaine fois. Au revoir.